I'm gonna, this is gonna be a fight. Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Welcome back to the Big Fight Recap here on BLTV Classic. He pulled his glasses off. Did you see his eye? His eye was just hanging out his head. On today's video, we revisit the infamous two fight saga between Mike Tyson and Mitch Blood Green. A genuine beef that 10 rounds of boxing couldn't squash, as the two would face off one more time on the street, this time in a much shorter affair with the decisive victor. Let's get right to it. After Tyson's 10-round decision to James Quick Tillis in 1986, the invincibility aura from Kid Dynamite took a slight knock as the two heavyweights battled out a much closer fight than the boxing fans and bookmakers expected. How disappointed are you that the knockout string is over? Not at all. If anything, I got you know I feel relieved, and I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. It was Tyson's first time going the distance as he had finished his previous 19 opponents all inside the opening two or three rounds. That gave some of the other heavyweight contenders an incentive to catch this teenage dynamo early, halt the hype train, and earn the highest possible payday outside of a championship fight. Tyson said, gonna give me a fight? I want Mike Tyson. Point blank. Michelle C. Tyson, he's a mo, and I'm gonna knock him out. Knock Mitch him Blood Green was one of the first fighters to utilize the new age of digital camcorders to get his message out there to boxing fans. Now I'm gonna show you some feast your eyes on a real heavyweight. There was no social media in those days, but local news stations and televised sports networks such as HBO would air the clips during a broadcast to gauge the fans' reaction. It's probably due to audio compression over time, but I can honestly say I have difficulty understanding what Mitch Green is saying. Two clear things were the muscle flexing and homophobic slurs, and bizarrely enough, as far as my research suggests, this was enough to land him a shot at the hottest prospect in world boxing. Growing up on the tough streets of Detroit, Mitch Green was a prominent player in 1970s New York game warfare. By the age of 17, he had witnessed his father lose his life in a bizarre Western-style quick-draw shootout, not long before being shot twice himself, fortunately escaping with non-fatal injuries. Green tried to escape gang life by joining the UBA boxing gym in New York, but by this time his ties to the street were too pronounced, as he was now hailed the king of New York street gangs by the NYPD for his role as gang leader in the Deadly Bloods crew. Things slowly started to change for Mitch as his reputation as a gang leader was exceeded by that of a talented amateur boxer, the muscular 6'5 big man that was racking up copious tournament success, including several New York Golden Gloves. From the Bronx, New York, undefeated in five professional bouts with one draw. Green took to the professional ring in 1980 and quickly started racking up wins over journeymen and fringe contenders such as Jumbo Cummings. Champion in waiting Trevor Burbick became the first man to beat Green in 1985, where Mitch made a good account of himself, only losing by majority decision. Both Tyson and Green were on the fringe of a world title shot, so regardless of the antics, the two were on a likely collision course. The trash talk from Green just helped build more interest in the fight, which in turn certainly struck a chord with Tyson, who openly admitted to hating that ugly mother effort. And Mike Tyson traditionally no robe. No socks, he says it makes him feel like a warrior, makes him feel like a gladiator. Tyson met Green for the first time in May 1986 at Madison Square Garden. It was Tyson's first match at a prestigious boxing venue and also the first to be covered by a large television network. Yet, the occasion didn't change the traditional no robe, no socks attire. He was all business and had a personal vendetta to settle with the now not so confident looking Mitch Blood Green. And was so much a factor in the last fight that we showed you here on HBO that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy, especially in the later rounds. So we'll see what he does about that against Mitch Green. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now we see some hand movement. Quick a shot. There's the left hook I was talking about. He did draw a warning from Luis Rivera, the referee, about holding. Green's in trouble. Good left hand by Tyson. 
Everyone has a plan until they get their mouth guard punched out of the ring in the first round. While Green had all the physical advantages, Tyson's supreme boxing skills and speed negated the gap in size and weight, backing up Green from the opening bell, slipping and countering, forcing the much bigger man into survival mode from the word to go. Big right hand against Tillis, and what a shot! That is an awesome shot. Tyson punched out Green's mouth guard again in the third, where after he started mocking his opponent for having a wide gulping mouth, stalking him across the ring, landing fierce single power punches. The punch. Another big left hook. Hey, Tyson, there, a good uppercut. He has to take a stand eventually. Another couple body shots. Well, he's smiling. Tyson is smiling, but see, Green has those fast hands. The fight became so routine by the closing stages, the crowd knew they were witnessing a foregone conclusion. Tyson himself appeared to have his mind elsewhere as he bizarrely kissed his trainer, Kevin Rooney, while he was trying to deliver him intricate strategies and details regarding the fight. Kevin Rooney is in there and just jabbering away 100 miles a minute. Mike Tyson leaned over and just kissed him. Tyson closed the show, trying to score the knockout, but Green's disinclination to engage allowed him to grab and clinch his way to safety, resulting in him losing nine out of 10 of the rounds on every general scorecard. But we knew deep inside that I was going to win this fight so easy because of his style. He's a dang tough opponent, and he took some fairly decent shots. But as you know, I won comfortably, and I didn't try for the knockout, and I used a great deal of discipline in there, not knocking him out. Tyson claimed he carried Green the 10-round distance on purpose to punish him for as long as possible. And whether it was true or not, Green's personal pride was hurt, and he was willing to do whatever it took to restore a sliver of respect amongst his peers. Green retired from boxing after the Tyson loss and returned to the street to earn a living from selling drugs. He always planned to one day get Tyson back in the ring, but as his years of inactivity ensued, Tyson progressed to one of the most dominant heavyweight champions of all time, undefeated and undisputed. The days of fighting lingering contenders such as Mitch Green were over. It wasn't until a couple of years after their fight that the two would meet again, this time in Green's element, the street. In the early hours of August 23, 1988, Mitch Green got wind that Tyson was shopping at a local clothing store close by to where he ran things on the street. Tyson had traveled a fair distance to pick up a luxury leather jacket handmade by one of his friends over at Dapper Dan's. As Tyson was chilling in the store with his entourage, Mitch Green burst through the door on his own, high on angel dust, demanding Tyson either give him a rematch or empty his pockets right there on the spot. Tyson, of course, no stranger to altercations on the street, dragged Mitch Green outside and pummeled him to the ground multiple times. Spectators said that the fight was short, violent, and very one-sided. In fact, it was no longer than 15 to 20 seconds, but that's more than long enough for the heavyweight champion to inflict severe damage. There is no footage of the fight, regardless of the clickbait you see on YouTube, but there were many accounts of what happened that all aligned, all except Green's account, where he claimed Tyson sucker punched him and ran. Who threw the first punch here? He did. He sucker punched me because he's with his friends, you know, and um, when he hit me, and I said, I couldn't get a chance to really get to him like I want to because everybody was like pulling me, you know, holding me, like so he could get away from me, so he could get away, and he like, he, was, he ran from me. Green was certain the Tyson scuffle, which became mainstream news around the world, would add enough public intrigue to get his rival back in the ring. But Mitch had already burnt his bridges among the promoters in the sport, with his violent threats to Don King in the past already shadow banning him from ever earning any serious money in the ring again. After Green's failed attempts to get the rematch with Tyson, he filed a civil lawsuit for $20 million due to the injuries he suffered during their fight. The former gang leader came away with one small W to coincide with a long list of L's, winning the case and being awarded $45,000, close to what his purse was during their professional fight in 1986. Yeah, I remember seeing Mitch Green's eye after that. And it was like, oof. He broke his socket. He broke oh, the eye socket, happened? yeah. He broke his eye socket. Yeah. The Shit. eye socket. You gotta hit really hard to do some like that, right? Green returned to the ring seven years later, but at that point he was a shell of his former self and was beaten by journeymen with losing records until he hung him up for good in 2005. As of 2022, Green is still a large-as-life character, but now employs his energy into his love of Christianity. He still has a gripe with Tyson, but I think it's fair to say the two have now moved on, and whenever the topic is brought up today, they both make light of their infamous 30-year feud. And that didn't work. The boy's scared of death. That's the street fight. The boy's scared of death. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't y'all have a street fight, Mitch? I, before, I before, before the ring, before the street. Thinking the man would do somebody, he wouldn't do nothing. Oh, man, what? he freaked me out. Did you know that actually Tyson and Sal are good friends and he comes to the show? He knew, look, look, oh, look, 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 look
Ah, 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 ah,